All right, let's go for the most shocking interpretation we possibly can because ooh, I need those clicks on YouTube. How about the tide is turning? Revolution has begun. Border ranchers are fed up with Joe Biden's failures on the border and have begun executing illegal immigrants. Yeah, okay, no, a little bit over the top. I mean, the story is Rancher 73 is charged with murder on his Arizona land after shooting dead Mexican 48 who had a history of illegal crossings into the U.S. and multiple deportations. Judge refuses to reduce $1 million bail despite plea. His wife is alone. The guy who got arrested, 73 years old. Here's the story. Here's what we know. He's got a ranch on the border in Arizona. Guy consistently illegally crosses. Rancher shoots and kills him. That's about it. Uh, I think stories like this probably have happened a lot in the past. Illegal border crossings aren't a new thing. In fact, they're particularly prominent right now under the Biden administration. And even before Biden and during Trump, there was a big problem and Trump was working as best he could to build that big, beautiful wall. Instead, we got some bollard fencing, but it's better than nothing. They secured several areas that were problem areas. It did help reduce traffic. They did start apprehending more people. And so it seems like uh, Donald Trump was really trying. Joe Biden, I don't know what he's trying to do. Shuffle more people in and spread them all about. But I think back to when I was a kid and I heard a lot of stories like this. So, of course, the narrative some people are going to want is that people are snapping. And it, and it may be, I'm not saying it's not true. I just don't want to go over the top with this one. It may be that the rancher finally said enough. Joe Biden is supposed to give a State of the Union address tonight. And of course, the border is a catastrophe. This story should not be happening. But I'll tell you what's really shocking to me about this. And it has very little to do with illegal border crossings and everything to do with stand your ground, the Second Amendment and self-defense. And that is in Arizona, you are allowed to shoot someone, at least according to this article, if they're about to trespass on your property. That's bold. I don't even think West Virginia allows that. I know that in West Virginia, if you're on your property and someone's threatening you in any way, you can use force against them. You don't have to retreat. Now, in Maryland, it's a bit different. In Maryland, if you're on your property and someone's threatening you, you have to retreat into your house. But if they try to get in, you can then defend yourself. And then, of course, we have New Jersey. In New Jersey, if you have fled into your home and locked all of the doors and you are cowering in fear and someone breaks in, you still are not allowed to use force against them unless you can prove you could not flee the building. That is to say, in New Jersey, you have to run away. It's remarkable. I was, I was told by law enforcement down there, let's say someone kicks your door in and they scream, "Ooh, I'm going to kill you and do these things. And you have a back door. You got to run out the back door. Now, if your family's in there, maybe you have an argument of defense of others. But if you can escape, then you have no legal justification for causing harm to another person who broke into your house. And my question was like, escape to where? It's like the middle of winter. There's snow on the ground. Where am I going? Am I going to run into an alley and just knock on some stranger's door and say, help, help, someone broke into my house? I guess. Now, I suppose the general idea is in their minds, the liberal mind, well, it's better that person survives. It's not worth killing anybody over, right? Here's the problem I have. I, you know, looking at this old guy, we'll get into it, we'll, we'll read it. I would, I, I, I reject the idea that the, that the onus is on the victim of aggression. I don't accept that. If you are minding your own business on your property and someone wants to aggress against you, I do not believe you have to run away in fear. You should not have to make assumptions about how to, you know, how, how, how to, uh, to let someone do something. If someone comes onto your property and you perceive a threat, that's their fault. Now, don't get me wrong, man. If someone's trespassing, I don't think you should shoot them or anything like that. If someone is like walking on your property, you should be like, hey, get off my property. I think this is basically how West Virginia does it. If someone trespasses, you can't just shoot them. You got to be like, get off my property now or else. And if they say, oh, yeah, well, OK, this guy's threatening me. He's refusing to get on my property. But typically you got to give him a warning like, hey, get out of here. You're trespassing and put up signs. I suppose in Arizona, it's not the case. So uh, I'll say it again. 
I, I'd probably get a million views if I titled this The Revolution Is Now. Border ranchers are, you know what? Maybe I'll just do it anyway. The revolution is now. Border ranchers fed up. Shoots. Nah. I, I do think there's an element to this. I got to be honest. They're, they're saying in the story this dude who got shot was doing it often, would cross it and out. I'm wondering if this rancher really did say enough is enough and just shoot the guy. I mean, I don't like people getting hurt, man. I, I get it. This is an illegal immigrant. He's committing a bunch of crimes. But man, you know, I've, I've, I've wondered about this. I'm curious. You guys can comment. Let me know what you think. I, I remember reading about like the Minutemen, which is basically like, I think they're like volunteer border guard. I don't know if they're still around. They probably are. But this idea that they shoot at illegal immigrants, I'm like, man, that's tough. You shouldn't be illegally entering the country. We've got a problem with drug cartels. I got a story for you to show you just how bad it is. Drug smuggler flipping over a vehicle, killing a bunch of people. We can't tolerate this criminal behavior. And if we don't secure our borders, we ain't got none. But I don't, I don't know about shooting anybody. I think that's a little bit too much. You know, we, we want to reduce the conflict, not increase it. I suppose the problem is if you're not going to build a wall, you're not going to put up fencing. And then when I, I can't remember which state it was, I think it might have been Arizona. They put up those those freight boxes, those uh, um, what are they called? Uh, con- shipping containers, put up shipping containers and made a wall. A judge ordered them be removed. And that to me is crazy. But here's here's the story. Let's read the story. Daily Mail reports an Arizona rancher has been charged with first degree murder and had his bail set at a whopping $1 million for fatally shooting a Mexican citizen on his property. George Allen Kelly, 73, was arrested following the January 30th fatal shooting of Gabriel Quinn uh, Butimia, 48, on his ranch in Keno Springs, a mile and a half north of the U.S.-Mexico border. Okay, so it's not directly on the border. We have a, I think they have a map here. So it looks like, there it is. So you can see this is the, the road. Here's the border. Yo, I gotta say, man, this guy entered his property. I don't see I don't see why he's being charged. Plus, he's 73. Come on. They say authorities are still investigating the fatal shooting with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's chief deputy saying it does not appear that Kelly knew Kuen Butimia ahead of the shooting. But a friend of Kelly's told KOLD he has had issues with people on his property in the past, though he believes Kelly acted in best in his best faith. <clears throat> Kuen Butimia, meanwhile, has a history of illegally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border, according to federal court records and was deported back to his home country multiple times, most recently in 2016. And just hours before the fatal shooting, Nagala's International reports, U.S. Border Patrol agents informed the county sheriff's department of a possible active shooter at the scene with a man identifying himself as Allen, saying he was not sure he was being shot at himself. Uh, Could it be that the guy illegally crossing was doing the shooting and this guy was defending himself? I don't know, man. Maybe the story is, This guy finally snapped and he just said, I'm an old man and I'm done. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. He sees the guy trespassing on his property and he says, I'm not taking any chances. I got a wife. Shoots him. If there's gunshots going off, I don't I don't know why we would assume that this guy, Kelly, was the aggressor. I mean, he's not the one breaking the law. So if I was going to have to make an assumption based off what I know right now, I'd argue it's the guy with a history of illegal activity who is likely the one aggressing. He's trespassing on property. I'd be willing to bet he's the one who, who started the fight. And that being said, I think they said they, they, they didn't find any weapons. They say Kelly's ranch in Keno Springs, Arizona, is just a mile and uh, a mile and a half north of the Mexico border. Santa Cruz County Sheriff's officials have said they discovered Cuen Butimia's body just about 100 to 150 yards from Kelly's home on January 30th. The victim appeared to have suffered from one gunshot wound. The Nogales, Mexico resident identity was later confirmed because of a Mexican voter registration card he carried. Officials say they are still trying to clarify the circumstances surrounding the shooting and establish a motive, with Chief Deputy Gerardo Castillo saying it doesn't seem like Mr. Kelly and the victim knew each other. But under Arizona law, deadly force is allowed on one's own property if the homeowner believes it, quote, immediately necessary to prevent trespassing. Quite literally, trespassing. So how did they charge this guy with first degree murder? He's on his own property. This guy's got a criminal history. It is dirty. I think they want this country to be gutted and destroyed, to be completely honest. So maybe, maybe as much as I was joking in the beginning, this really is a story of a guy just saying, I'm mad as hell, I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not the first time 
someone on a border ranch has shot an illegal immigrant or killed them. All right. So I don't want to act like it's a new thing, but maybe for this current contextual period with the Biden administration, we may see the start of something truly devastating. So I certainly hope not. They say several other statutes under stand your ground laws also defend the use of physical or deadly force when a homeowner fears a threat and believes force is necessary. Kelly's neighbor, Maria Castillo, has said that migrants who cross the border are often seen coming and going around the area. Federal court records show Kuen Batimia has had a history of illegal border crossings and deportations in and around Nogales, with the most recent documented case in 2016. Castillo would not comment on Kuen Batimia's immigration status, saying it has not yet been confirmed. Well, we can see right here. I mean, what's this guy doing? Either way, he's trespassing, right? According to a sheriff's dispatch report obtained by Nogales International, the office first received a call around 2.40 p.m. on January 30th from U.S. Border Patrol agents relaying information about a possible active shooter in the area of Sagebrush Road. The Border Patrol agents had apparently received a report from someone at the scene who mentioned a group of people running and said he was unsure if he was getting shot at as well. The entry identified the person as Allen. Castillo said the sheriff's department responded to the call, but did not find anything. Just a few hours later, at around 5.50 p.m., sheriff's deputies received another report of shots fired at the property. And by 6.42, they recovered Cohen Batimia's body. Really? All right. I'll tell you what I think is possible. A couple things. One, somebody showed up early in the day, fired on this rancher who doesn't seem to have a history of this. Or shots were fired, they were called in, and maybe the homeowner was like, what is going on? A few hours later, this guy enters his property and he says, I ain't taking no chances. Or it could be Alan snapped and that morning pulled out his gun and started shooting at people. But that, sorry, while possible, makes a bit more assumption. It's a bit more assumptive. What we know is that people are constantly crossing the border illegally and shots were fired. I think that it's slightly more probable that somebody was shooting, Alan I think Alan's name uh, is, is, is it is Alan Kelly, right? Make sure I get this guy's uh, his name right. Alan Kelly. Uh, they said A L L E. I think maybe this guy heard the shots and then said, "I'm not going to wait around to find out." Sees this guy walking on his property and says, "Not today, man. Not with gunshots. You're trespassing." Authorities have said, authorities have said there were no weapon on there. There were no weapons on the victim at the time, and investigators had collected two assault style rifles from Kelly's property in the aftermath to determine whether either were used in the shooting. And I bet they were. I bet you hear gunshots and you're going to be like, hey, somebody's walking on my property. <clears throat> at his last court hearing, Kelly asked a judge about getting his bail reduced, citing his wife living at the ranch. She's there by herself. Nobody to take care of her, the livestock or the ranch. And I'm not going anywhere. I can't come up with a million dollars, he said, before asking the judge to consider reducing it to any degree. The judge replied that his attorney would be able to request a reduction of bond though it was unclear whether the request was made. Local attorney Brenna Larkin, who was appointed by the court to represent Kelly, did not immediately return a call seeking comment on the charge against him. Dailymail.com has also reached out for, to Kelly's far, uh, family members for comment. The Kellys had previously sued to prevent a golf station from being built in Keno Springs, court documents show, seeking damages of $2 million. It is also unclear what happened in that case. Kelly is now being held at the Santa Cruz County Jail and is set to return to court on Wednesday. He has identified himself in court as a rancher, but also appears to dabble in self-published fiction about ranch life in the border region. One of his books, available as an ebook on Amazon, is entitled Far Beyond the Border Fence and is described as bringing the Mexican border drug conflict into the 21st century. The protagonists of this story are a couple whose first names match Kelly and his wife's, Wanda's, with a child bearing his son's name. The 57-page work revolves around the couple living in southern Arizona, at the VMR Ranch. Kelly and his wife's real life ranch is called the Vermilion Mountain Ranch. So it sounds like fiction, but uh, probably real. How about that? It describes how the characters George and his foreman had to patrol the ranch daily armed with AK-47s. What can we do for this guy, man? Look, I get it. If he committed a crime, charge him. But he's 73. His wife needs him. This guy should be on his ranch taking care of his property and his animals with his wife and he should face justice. But this guy ain't going nowhere. He's not a flight risk. What's the point of a million dollars bond? They are just punishing him, but they are punishing all of us. Anyone who opposes what they've been doing on the border, who speaks up, this is what they're doing. 
We know the Biden administration has been has been human trafficking. And it's crazy to say, right? But they've been flying children around the country and dropping them off. So what can we do for this guy? A million bucks. How does it work in in Arizona? Do do you have to pay the full million? I know in some places it's like 10 percent is put up with the bond. You get it back uh, eventually if if, you know, once the person returns or whatever. The purpose of the bail or the bond or whatever is to make sure the person doesn't flee. But where is this guy going? Okay, he's got property there. He's not going to leave it behind. He's got a wife. She ain't going anywhere. He's got animals. They think he's going to flee to Mexico or something. He's got property. What, what? I don't know, man. Uh, but we got to do something. We got to figure out how to do something. I'm wondering if there's a way to, you know, he's got a son. I'm wondering if his son, son can, I'm worried about his wife. If the dude's going to sit in jail over something, you know, unjust, as long as his family's taken care of. So if you guys have any ideas. Under Arizona law, a person is justified in threatening or using physical force against another when and to the extent a reasonable person would believe that physical force is immediately necessary to protect himself against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful physical force. It could be used as a defense when homeowners attack or potentially even kill someone to stop certain crimes like murder, rape or armed robbery. The stand your ground laws are not permitted as a defense, however, when there was only a verbal provocation or the homeowner who was claiming self-defense provoked the attack. By using the stand your ground laws as a defense, prosecutors have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a defendant was not justified in using deadly force in self-defense. Now, now how is this guy being charged? Gunshots reported earlier in the day. Several hours later, gunshots again, guy dies. Hey, I can paint a simple picture. Somebody comes on his property and is shooting. He panics. He then sees a guy, he's probably on high alert, look, pr- patrolling his property, sees a dude and says, that might be him, get off my property, guy is, you know, for whatever reason, doesn't, or something happens and bang. Simple narrative. You're going to try and prove to me beyond a reasonable doubt this guy did something wrong when an illegal immigrant entered his property just hours after gunshots were ringing out. Maybe it is the case that Alan lost his mind. Or I shouldn't say lost his mind, but finally snapped and said, this is it. I'm done. Bang, bang, bang. And was shooting all day from two o'clock to 5 p.m. Just bang, bang, shooting at random people. I don't believe it. I don't know what to believe. You know, I don't know. I I don't know that I know it's true. I can just tell you, you ain't getting me on a jury to convict this guy. You put me on a jury. I quit this guy in two seconds. At the very least, I mean, I got to be honest, you put me on a jury. I probably acquit anybody. Well, almost anybody. Show me video evidence of someone abusing a kid and I'm going to bang the gavel and be like, lock him up. Sorry. End of story. You know, there's very few circumstances where I'm actually going to agree with incarceration or, or with the state. And plus, I'm a big fan of jury nullification. So you get somebody on like nonviolent offenses, property stuff, and I'm going to be like, this guy's got to be held accountable. But you're not going to see me voting in favor of, you know, years in prison restitution and, and community service or something for nonviolent offenses, depending on the scale. I know, and it's not always the same. Sometimes they, they, they plead down and stuff like this. And so you got to be careful about convicts and, and releasing them and, and things like that because they may be violent. But I'm telling you with this story, let me, let, me, let, me, let me show it to you. Let me show it to you. Alleged human smuggler in Arizona arrested after rollover crash, illegal immigrants ejected. Timothy Briols, 32, arrested in Pinal County, Arizona, after leading deputies on a chase. This is why you expect, after all of this news, a homeowner on the border to just be like, I'm assuming this guy's got good intentions. Or do you think they're going to be like, these people tend to be, they, they, they don't tend to be, but uh, I shouldn't say that. I should say there are too many traffickers, smugglers, mules, and they're dangerous. That guy smuggling humans? He's not going to hesitate to hurt you to get through because he's not sticking around. You're in his way. Drug traffickers. Oh, boy. If one of these drug mules misses a shipment and that goes missing because they get stopped by someone, their family is going to be in trouble. So uh, you're in their way. Illegal immigrant trying to get a job in the United States. Eh, you know, they don't want to get reported, but I, but I don't know. I, I wouldn't assume that they're going to hurt anybody. The problem is, if you live on the border and you deal with people shooting at you, a couple hours earlier, gunshots ring out. Are you supposed to now just be like, well, I'm going to sit and wait to see if this guy's one of the good ones or the bad ones? Is he just an economic migrant who wants a better job? Or is he the guy who shot at me earlier? I'm not waiting to find out. You trespassed. 
I'm getting shot at, we're done. Don't trespass on people's property. Don't illegally enter the country. But this is the, this is the state of the union. You know, you know, Joe Biden's going to be talking tonight. Did I say Trump earlier? Joe Biden's going to be talking tonight in the state of the union. And we're going to hear what he has to say. And I tell you this right now, and most of you know it, it's going to be lies because we're dealing with stories like this. Eggs through the roof. And now check out this story. Contraband eggs piling up at the U.S.-Mexico border. I'll probably talk a bit more about this one in my 4 p.m. segment because we're getting ready for the State of the Union. So I'm going to give you my State of the Union and talk about where this country is because it ain't good. From Chinese spy balloons they let fly over the country to a potential war with, with China over Taiwan, war in Ukraine, and it's Biden's leadership, lost revenues, food shortages, inflation, and Biden takes no responsibility for any of it. There's your State of the Union. But I'll, we'll, we'll get in depth. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.